My name's Dice. I was 14 when I had my first train. People always think living outside the road and all that, it's hard. Well, it can be, but I don't think it is. You know, a lot of these kids, you know, they just, I don't know, they just want to, I don't know, be miserable, you know? They hate life, you know? Not all of them, but some I see, you know, it's like, why are you living this life if you're so pissed off, man? Go, go do something with yourself, you know? I love this life. I want to change it for nothing. Not at all. Tattoos mean? This one's obviously squatters' rights or the law of adverse possession. Um, I have a highway for hitchhiking and railroad rails for riding trains. If you're out here for 10 years, you're doing it because you want to. You know, you don't just have 10 years of bad luck. If I wanted to right now, and it wasn't always this way, and dad, you know this is fucking true, but now I can call and my dad will be like, come home, you know? When I first started, we were, we, we, we didn't hate each other, we just hated who we were, you know? We fought a bunch, you know, but fuck, man, I mean, he knows that I'm not down on that. Fuck, dude, I'm a wily 21-year-old kid. I want to fucking in Portland, Oregon. I've never been here before. I, you gotta understand, dog, I'm from Granbury, Texas. I'm from, you know, a place that you've never heard of. Taylor. Everyone calls him Pony Boy. A lot of people know him as Pony Boy. He tags Pony Boy. I call him Taylor because it's it's more personal to me to call him by his name. He's not just Pony Boy to me. He's Taylor. He's my boyfriend. He's my best friend. He's my husband. He's everything. Toothbrush tape towns like that. Toothbrush? Dude, let me get one. Which one do you want? Oh, oh. <laughs> you want the whole one? <laughs> I'll take this one. How old are you? 18. Sometimes I just don't tell people how old I am, but really I don't think it matters. It doesn't matter how old you are, it's just you know, how you think about things and how you hold yourself. 
the way everyone lives their life, it's just not for me, dude. Living in the same, like, suburb area your whole life or anything like that, like, that was never me, you know? definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Like, that's what working is. It's fucking insanity. Like, having a house is a joke, dude. Having a fucking job is a joke. Like, I mean, having money is a joke, but, you know, I wouldn't have what I have if it wasn't for people that were working. So there's a respect, you know, that's there, but I, I still wouldn't work. And who's, who the fuck's going to hire me, man? What the fuck am I going to work? You know what I mean? What, what kind of job am I going to get, dude? Teaching pre preschool kids? You gotta be fucking kidding me. Serving on a lunch line? Fuck no, dude. Working at a bank? That's hilarious. <laughs> like, there ain't no job I can get. The road's my job, dude. Holding the fucking sign's my job. Riding the train's my job. So we left uh, Elkhart, Indiana last night. We just passed fucking East Conway, uh, Ohio, I guess. And we're headed to uh, PA right now. We got a long ass ride. But we got smokes, we got booze. We, we met a bunch of capitalist Christians that kicked us down a bunch of food, so we're stocked up on that. And so we're good. <laughs> stuff people try to fucking occupy a place. Make a point. Seriously. I just feel like since this fucking Occupy shit has been going down, people have been looking at us a lot differently. It's not really, I mean, they can protest all they want. That's yeah. what America's oh, okay. gonna rise again! I feel like it's just fucking up, fucking it up for travelers. We're gonna support all the occupation. We've been occupying the road in this country for fucking for a while, being anywhere we want. It's guys like you that inspired me to get involved. And like now, all of a sudden, they're like, "Yeah, it should be, it should be legal to fucking camp and park." Uh, I've been occupying since October first. Been here since day one. It's like no, dude. We've been struggling with fucking trespassing and shit like that, like forever. So it's yeah. just like we now can't these go. Fucking pussies they're, it. they're not gonna change shit, yeah. and it's just making it worse, dude. Yeah. Oh. Ba 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 
It's like Christmas. Oh shit! Boom! Nice. Yup. What size? Eleven. Another fucking flashlight. Oh, fuck. I got two. I got three. Flashlight? I got four. Oh, shoot a hammer drill. Oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta go. Uh, yeah, we, we were just check. We were just checking out. Go. No, we yeah. can't. Can't look through real quick. We'll kind of put that stuff back down for you guys too. Yeah. All right. Oh, I didn't see no trespassing Yeah, I didn't. Oh, in the dumpster. Yeah, I kind of like them. They're not bad. But uh, we found some good stuff. It's cool. I got what I wanted. Yeah, I got what I wanted. Last night, we uh, tried our damnedest to get out. We couldn't find a rideable car. And uh, she started pulling away, so we ran up to uh, the uh, third unit which is something that we don't normally do, but we did it. Police came in, threw us down on the ground, arrested us, took us to jail. The jello was good. <laughs> yeah, good jello, <laughs> good, good jello. pizza. It was cold. Fuck <laughs> candles. Fuck Newton candles. Yeah. <laughs> we had a chance to at least tell the uh, the workers there that, you know, uh, it wasn't our intention to uh, slow them down or, or cause any problems. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people watching this and saying that we uh, screwed things up for, for everybody. And all I can say is, fuck you, come find me. I'll just beat you up. Just don't come here. Yeah, just don't come don't to New Kansas here. if you don't like it. It's a brotherhood, man, for sure. Not saying that I wouldn't ditch him, uh, but he'd find me. But he's a good kid, dude. He's solid, man. That kid's definitely solid. He fucking knows what he's doing. He'll do more for people than I see other people doing. Like, I know that kid will go the extra mile to provide shit. He'll be my fucking friend for the rest of my life, you know? If someone killed him, I'd track him down and kill him, bottom line. Fucking woke up this morning, ass crack of dawn, and then it just started fucking downpouring, man. I'm chilling over there waiting for these guys to come back, dude, and then there's like this fucking tunnel thing on the side of the wall that just like starts fucking pissing out water, and it's just like, whoosh. Like I had to fucking grab everybody's stuff, pack it up as best as I could, shoulder my pack, put both of their packs on my arms, and then fucking I gotta run through this thing that's like shooting water out. So not only do I get soaked, but like Roscoe's running, but it's supposed to rain for the next fucking three more days. So I'm definitely, I'm definitely down to get drunk. It's the only way to fucking make this weather go away. Yeah, my dad went to the Navy, I think, uh, when I was like two, and, and I lived with my grandparents. Uh, I didn't have a mother, but I had a grandmother, and that was my, that was my mother figure in my life. 2010, I got attempted burglary uh, for trying to get into a squat. I'm facing this charge, and my grandma had been in the hospital. I knew that it was that she was sick, and uh, I called my dad. And said I'm in fucking jail, man. I, I'm sorry, pops. I'm, I was trying to come home. I mean, I'm right here in Fort Worth. Kept asking, how's how's my grandma doing? 
How's Grandma? How is she? Is she okay? What did she say? How's she doing? It's really hard for me to like forgive myself for <laughs> for being in jail. Why she died, you know? But uh, yeah, my dad bailed me out so I can go to the funeral. Kind of depressing, you know, because I wish I could have been better, made my grandma happier before she died. Family, man, that's that's a big one for me. food because we were so full when uh, when we left Danville that uh, we didn't grab any extra food and we've been sitting on this thing for how many hours five seven five or seven pretty much living off weed and cigarettes right now From the future, 2051. No, no. God bless you. <laughs> We're just time travelers looking for modern day packaged goods. More like food and hot coffee. But like, man, you could just have this shit for free. Get your crazy ass out of here. What's the quickest way off these tracks to a store? To a store? Yeah, probably up that way, right? Get on the road and follow it down about two blocks. A little convenience store. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thanks, man. They're not menthol, are they? Oh, they are. Oh, that's all right. We'll <laughs> smoke them. Thank you. Damn, I thought they were actual cigarettes. Oh, oh man. right on, man. Thank you, so much, Thank you brother. Dude. Thank you. Thanks, man. Oh, something warm. Oh, man. God bless you. Yeah, God bless you. too, man. Union break. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, boss. Thank you very much. Spend it on drugs. We won't. After you did exactly what you guys are doing, and you got into heroin and you died. Where are you headed to? Wherever? Oh, uh, we're going back down south where it's warmer. <laughs> I don't blame you. For I don't sure. Blame you. Good luck, honey. Thank you. I hear that just about every time I fly a sign. My son OD'd from heroin, don't buy drugs. People say, oh, I'll never OD, I'll never OD, but it happened. No, I didn't say scrappy. No, I said, everyone says that and then it happens to them. It's already happened to two of my friends, half of my family.
consider yourself a hobo? Nah, I mean, <clears throat> I, I ride freight trains. I really wouldn't consider myself maybe a modern day hobo. In that I'll still take work if I can, but I'm not necessarily uh, riding trains uh, to get to different places to work. Um, like the original hobos. And I might even uh, go so far as to say that I do it better than the hobos. I mean, look, dude, you think this shit happened to hobos? I don't know. When you're alone, you know, you, you learn more about yourself. You learn more of the things that you're capable of doing. Um, and you learn to forget about being, you know, embarrassed and, and shameful. When I'm by myself and I don't have anyone around, I have my dog. Um, and also, he gets to see the fucking country, man. Like, that's, how, how more badass would that be for a dog, dude? I mean, it, it's probably freaky being on a train. Um, <laughs> come on, Roscoe. <laughs> okay. You know, he gets to travel around and he gets to see new things and pee in new places and meet new dogs and run around and swim in, you know what I mean? Like, there's dogs on the road that have seen more things than people have seen in their life, and that's, that's fucking sad, man. They kill, like, fucking 90,000 dogs a year in Louisiana, so I was just like, man, I went there, and, and then I seen all these puppies, and I'm just like, man, six bucks, Pablo Escobar, my little kilo, first dog on the road, four years. Four years going on five. Look at this guy, dude. He's happy. I saved this nigga's life. But yeah, he's a he's a good dog, man. Hey, Pablo. Pablo. Yeah, Pablo Escobar. But yeah, same story with uh, Roscoe. Same thing. Scrappy was like, "Oh man, I'm getting a dog, dude." And we seen him, and we we're like, "Dude, he's coming with us, man." He was a dumb fuck at first, but man, he's good now, dude. Every time Scrappy leaves, Roscoe runs, dude. It's like, fuck this, dude. I ain't letting him fucking leave me, dude. But uh, he likes the puppies. He's like a wolf, Papa Wolf. My childhood? Um, well, I was fucking born in uh, Chesapeake Bay in Northern Virginia. Moved to North Carolina when I was like four or five with my older brother. Um, stayed in this badass Christian foster home called Open Door. It was stayed there for like three years, then moved to Michigan and kicked it up there. Had a really cool like punk scene. My brother was in a bunch of bands when I was younger, so I got like school on really good music at a really young age. Yo, 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 one, two, check, 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 check. Let me hear that sax. Mr. Woods, let me hear that sax. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, we're pumping areola. <laughs> Dude, it's poison ivy, bro. You look old as hell. <laughs> the fuck, man? No, dude, I got poison ivy on my hands, my dick. Well, quit sleeping house. outside, man. Why don't you quit bro, sleeping life, outside? Dude, you guys got to get a grip on your life, man. Get a job. <laughs> you, can't, you know what I mean? Get a wife, get a job, get a house, have some kids, fuck them all over, shoot them in the face. You know what I mean? You won't have that poison ivy anymore, baby boy. Think about it next time. You don't want to cross these spoons. You get your ass smoked. <laughs> I told him, dude, it's early still, man. He's going to come back to reality. You see this? This is what's going to happen to your kids. Parents, keep an eye on them, man. Keep them off drugs. Take him to church. You don't want him to turn out like this guy, man. My name is Christmas Woods, AKA Playboy Pegasus. I had it all, man. I had a wife, a house. I was on top of the world, king of the mountain, in killer bands. 
I just woke up one day and I was like, you know what? What the fuck is the point of all this shit? I, I disappeared, man. I turned into a ghost, which probably had bummed a lot of people out. I didn't tell anybody. I just woke up and left. Now I'm surrounded by three really close brothers, man, and I couldn't be happier. I'm being taught the, taught the, the ropes of the road. When Scrappy told me, get the fuck up here, you're getting on top of this grainer. I did it, man, and it was the most exhilarating feeling I've ever felt in my life. Christmas. Well, it was awesome, dude. Um, we used to watch Thundercats together, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Had a fucking insane father, crappy mother. You know, it worked out all right. See, that's the thing. I mean, we were split up quite a bit. You know, we were together, and then we were we were separated, and then together. My friends know me, but they haven't been through the same shit that I've been through. But with him, he can relate to it. He's my brother. He's my, my baby brother. He's the only family I got pretty much in this country. He's the fucking real deal Holyfield, dude. I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that he's on the road. You know, who better to have with you than your brother? I mean, he's his own person, you know? He's his own entity. I try not to get in the way. I just sit back and observe. Why would I ever say something bad about my brother? He let me tattoo my name on his ass, so you know what I mean? I got the prime real estate. I got right above the crack. Nobody will ever get that close. I mean, that's, that's pretty respectable if somebody's gonna let you tattoo their name on your ass, you know? my parents' place. It's kind of been used as storage. And we just got off the road, me and Rachel, and been trying to take over. We have electricity here and shit, so it's kind of legit. I'm just kicking back. Trying to make a fucking fire go. I'm collecting a fucking paycheck now. What of it, <laughs> you know? I'm having fun with it too, I mean, shit. I, I can honestly say, like, if if this job wouldn't have fell in my lap, I don't know. I mean, I'm glad that it did. I mean, what do I do? I fucking, I mop floors, I take out trash, and I'm getting paid. It's not hard. I don't have to talk to anybody. That's what I really like. I don't have to really, not that I'm not like a people person, but I'm kind of not, really. I don't, I don't want to like customer service and shit. I can't do all that, you know? So I, I'm, I'm happy with where I work right now. Aww. <laughs> la, la, la. How long have you guys been together? Uh, a year and a half or so. We got together in September in 2010. I don't know what you were thinking. I was thinking, oh, I like him. Where'd y'all meet? New Orleans. I'm from an hour and a half away from there, and I had two jobs that I was moving there. I was trying to go to school there. And two weeks later, I left with him. Yeah. And here I am, almost two years later. <laughs> Man, my clothes weren't even fitting. They were falling apart, falling off of me. I was covered in piss, puke, and poop. <laughs> that didn't matter to her. It didn't matter, though. That didn't, that's just stuff you're going through. It doesn't make you you just because you're drunk and you fuck up and things get fucked up. Yeah. I'm a toe. 
You're so cute. Yeah. That's drool. Or That's throw all up. drool all over me. Or spit up or something. Your dad's like, <laughs> what? He spits up. <laughs> what was your first, like, paranormal <clears throat> feeling whenever you started writing trades? I don't think I've ever even asked you that. I'm envious. I mean, I wish I had the the spirit to do that, it's to just to not have any responsibilities, because I've always been conditioned to be responsible. But, you know, what would it be for me to wake up and not have a worry or a care? Or... But I don't know if that's your agenda or not. I mean, it is in a sense, but I have to really... Or is it just about being free and peaceful and not having any conflict or any responsibility? Is it really that? It, it is kind of a demonstration, I guess. It is. It is a... Um, kind of taking action, at least in my own life, you know, you know, be the change that you that you want to see in the world. Oh, believe me, I'm I want to get rid of the elitist too. Mm -hmm. But what do you offer? What's it at the end of the day? What do you got? I mean, I ain't yeah, got the answer. Like, I certainly like, ain't got yeah, the answer. That's why I'm conformed. That's why I'm living it. Oh, and, yeah. and you guys have basically just ditched out. I'm not saying, out, and that's cool. I mean, I can understand you don't want to fight for Procter and Gamble. I get it. <laughs> All right. You know, I can get sit there and be not proud of him and angry and upset and be like my dad would be. I've given you plenty of reason to as well. First, I was I didn't want to be open about it. I, you know, because I, I knew there was going to be questions after questions, and I didn't have all the answers. Still don't. What I keep telling Taylor is, you know, when is this like? This is a chapter in your yeah, life. When's it going to be over? That's where it, it becomes dangerous if you get stagnant because the only thing that's important is smoking drinking and having a good time life has not been that tough on me you know it seems like it at times but i've just had a good upbringing you know and i wouldn't be here today i wouldn't be who i am without that you know and that's kind of cool yeah that is i dig it <laughs> <laughs> I always told Taylor, because I've never had a dad before, that it'd be cool for his dad to be like my dad, you know? That's what I do. Yeah. All right, babe. I'll see you later. Yeah. It's off the hinge. Like I was saying, my mom wasn't, I, she apparently wasn't fit to take care of us, so she put us on a bus out to Jersey, where my grandma was, and... I'm sure my dad was on dead tour. That was like one of my childhood memories and m missing my dad because, you know, I hadn't really been around him and hadn't really been around my mom and just, I guess, confused. And that's when I stayed with my grandma. This is grandma. She come over here, Seth. Pretty much like my mom, dude. Because I never knew my mom, so she was hard ass like a mom, dude. Not no fucking weak granny, dude. I mean, it definitely took her a while because she's just like, what do you, you know, how come you're not going to school and how come you're not like doing something to where it's gonna get you a career and make money and get a car and a fucking license and all, do all this shit? And I'm just like, because that's not what I do. But she accepts it. She, you know. She supports the fact that this is what I'm going to do for a long time. And probably, you know, it'd be a lot to go back, you know. It's going to take a lot. So what's it like hosting? It's different, you know. I mean, fuck, it's... I've never really had the opportunity to, to do it myself, so... I think my traveling fan friends would probably do the same. It ain't no thing, really. I mean, it's what you're supposed to do. I like to see people fucking fat and happy and drunk, stoned, whatever you like. So what is it like traveling as a female on the road? In a sense, a lot of things are a lot easier. Um, people are nicer to you. It's like, say, hitchhiking. It's happened to me a few times. They wouldn't have picked us up if there wasn't a girl. I guess it just feels safer, they're more comfortable. I don't know. It kind of sucks also because with men, not all men, but they think that you asking for help in any way that you owe them a favor. 
And I always say to them, would you talk to your daughter like that? That's so different than boys. This is how we do it, nigga. What? Come to our streets. Come to our streets. I dare you. I dare you. I like, I kind of like punk rock Sal a little bit when he's all drunk and he's getting philosophical and shit like that. I gotta say this all the time. It's like, people ask me all the time, what am I doing? Where am I going? What am I doing with all this stuff? And I'm like, I'm just, I'm living. I am living. Check that shit out, son. What is that? You oh, owe someone some some money or something? No, somebody finally owes me some. <laughs> oh, the job. Oh, damn. 168. 168. Nice. That's what, is, that, is that not nice? This is so worth it. <laughs> no, nah, this is like a week and a day, I think. I split from here before. I'm just doing it again. It's not, you know, I guess I live my life in a bunch of fucking repetition, but nah, I'm not leaving. I'm going places. <laughs> this place will be here when I get back. You gotta take care of your feet, man. You don't take care of your feet, you're straight up just gonna be bumming. I got feet problems right now from jumping in the Mississippi River in New Orleans, which was a huge mistake. But they told me I wouldn't jump off that pier, so I did it. You really wanna see it? Dude, it's pretty bad. It's definitely not healing. I mean, it feels a lot better right now, but yeah. That's what happens, man, if you don't uh, take care of your feet, change your socks often. We've all seen the progression of this flesh-eating virus I have. I'm still feeling pretty good, though. Man. I find my trades everywhere. I find them on the ground, yeah. wherever, in your mama's house. <laughs> A ninja star, some dude made out of a skill saw, big ass cross, bobcat foot. This fool gave me. These are my riding glasses. Boom, hopping those trains. <laughs> I keep stuffing all kinds of things in here. I got uh, hair from two twin redheads. I got uh, cicada from my old lady, my old ex-wife. There's a dried up lizard in there. I found. There's Terry, my old pet uh, brown recluse that died. We got a fully running tattoo machine. Probably never get it from us, but yeah. this is always up for grabs as well. Anything I got. And that's why my pack weighs so much. <laughs> oh no shit. Um, I got these deer mandibles I found in the woods. Some skulls I found. This guy, Blackbird, found me and gave me a big ass rat or something. Man, I don't know. Bam. 
the hot dye. I got the Jumanji set, some horse teeth, the magic carpet. Damn. Damn. Oh, we got this shit called Goblin Gold, dude, where we, we smash pennies and shit on the tracks. It's fucking legit. What's by that skull? Just give me that back. And that no, fell no, off no. my coat, dude. No way, dude, I won this. From when? when you bet you this to that? me. You bet this with me. I swear to God. I bet you that? Yeah. Damn. <laughs> well, I got two big trades with this guy right here. The Devil's Legacy Left to Earth Mortals. It's from 1860. Priceless to me. And then, I don't even know why I carry this thing around anymore, but I got that Holy Bible from 1640. Straight legit. Don't believe me? Look at those signatures in the back. I know you can see those dates. It's legit. It's got that nice ornate front. Priceless. Still like I do, man. Man, come on, I was hitting shit all day. That's why I was a pitcher in Little League. And what were you? Third baseman or something? Or outfield or some shit. Center field, kid. <laughs> Roscoe, come on, man. Tones, heavier objects, we can make different uh, sounds. See, there you go. You got the idea now, dude. This is pretty much my last day on the road. I'm choosing to leave the road uh, because I have a wife at home that I love very much. I left her, and I thought I was making the right choice, but I started thinking about it, and I really miss her. The hardest thing about all this is how much fun I've had doing some of the most simplest things, like throwing rocks at objects. That's what I'm going to miss, is the simplicity of life. It's just like Jordan versus Bird, you know what I mean? Call it in the air. It was great traveling with my brother. You know, we, we've been separated a long time in our life. And uh, when he found this out last night, when I finally made my mind up, he cried. And it was the first time I'd ever seen my brother cry. Uh, I'm going to miss him dearly. Uh, but he's a warrior, you know? He doesn't need me. He doesn't need anything. I'm definitely going to miss my brother. You know, now that we're older, we just don't have a lot of time together. And I know one of us is going to go soon. I know it. You know what I mean? I know, I know how me and Christmas is going to end. Like, we ain't going to die of old age or a disease or any shit like that. We're going to, we're going to either get murdered or fucking end up imploding and taking our own lives. Those are the only two ways that we're going to go out. I feel like it's just part of my life, you know? Like growing up, seeing my dad drink every day, it's kind of just like burned into my head, you know? I know how to drink. I, can, I drink to get drunk, you know? It's definitely a problem. I think you just have nothing better to do when you're waiting for a train. Like, you might as well have a drink, you know? You might as well have a drink a case of beer. Like, fuck it, dude. That's an escape from having emotions. It's like a bandage, but you know, bandages fall off and then and you have those cuts that are open, but you know, they eventually heal. At the time, you don't realize that, but the next day you're like, oh shit, man, I fucked up, you know? Like everyone says, I guess the first step is admitting that you're an alcoholic. I figured out that I could hop on a tram when I was like 15, I think. I mean, I had no idea you could even travel that way. And I found out about it, I'm like, this is 
this is what I need to do. Nobody's supporting me, so why don't I just go support myself and figure things out on my own? It just clicked in my head that if I leave, maybe shit will get better. I can do anything I want. I can, I can go wherever I want. I have the whole country to explore. It was the greatest feeling I've ever really had. I think that amongst travelers, it's more of like a free love. Not necessarily a free love, but it's like, you know what I mean? It's, it's more about primitive feelings, you know what I mean? Like being sexually drawn to someone. And it's cool, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, cause you never know. You, you might find the person that you fall in love with. Will I? Probably not. Um, but she may be out there, I don't know. I'm excited, man, I'm really excited. With all the travelers who come up here every year, it's supposed to be the biggest sugar beet harvest that they've had in a while. To have a couple grand in my pocket is gonna help me out, you know? I'm, I, I can actually do something that I haven't been able to do for a while, which is not be broke, not be fucking hungry, not be traveling, mostly. Yeah, man, so what have you been up to since I last saw you, I guess? Uh, so me and Rachel ended up breaking up in New Orleans. Uh, it was my plan to kind of settle down there after a while, but uh, that kind of fell through, you know, whatever. And then, like, I went to jail. She got a job and basically said, like, I want to stay here. So we didn't get to spend a lot of time together. So I would go shoot dope and, <laughs> and drink and shit. And uh, she didn't like that. I decided to come up to North Dakota and, like, do some fucking work. I'm just going to give it all that I got and be completely dedicated. I'm ready to do something different besides just fly signs, you know? Everybody's gotta take a break, man. I feel like I can get a lot more done with my life if I'm somewhere with a little bit of stability. You know, I've never owned a car, never had an actual driver's license. I haven't had a lot of jobs in and out of jail. Shit gets old, you know? That's gonna be the most rewarding thing is like making it out and being like, I just I just worked for a month straight, every night, every day, sleeping outside in the fucking cold ass North Dakota weather. I'm sure at the end of it all, I'm, I'm definitely gonna be happy it's over, but I'm gonna be happy to to turn over a new leaf mostly. Since I've been home now, I've been back for probably 50 something days. Uh, I'm definitely starting to feel the itch again. It's hard being around somebody all the time. Every day I go through turmoil because in one hand, I'm able to do what I want. I can go to my, my music studio, play whatever I want, but I don't have that personal freedom that I felt like I had when I was on the road. It's almost like I don't even feel like I'm myself right now. I'm back to that shitty person that I was when I decided to leave. You finally in your life, you choose to not care what anybody thinks or what anybody cares about and you just do it. I'm 32 years old. I deserve some excitement. 
No offense to my old lady, no offense to my best friends who I'm gonna miss, my bandmates. Regardless, I will be back on the road. I just, I'm not a fucking scumbag, so I have to settle things. Or I just live that woods curse and just do it. We haven't really talked about like settling, settling down. She wants to buy this bus. I'm down to do that. That's the one thing why I think it'd be cool to have a bus because it's like if I want to go somewhere, I don't have to really worry about flying a sign, getting money, getting booze, walking there, or finding a ride. Like I just want to be able to be like, boom, we're going here. She's very kind-hearted. It's easier to talk to a girl about things that are going on with you than it is to talk to a dude. She's taught me a lot about rocks <laughs> and shiny things. I don't know, he has a good heart. He has a really good heart, but he has like, I guess a lot of like skeletons in his closet and a lot of issues. I think the rewards are greater than the shit that you have to go through. Maybe it's being naive, I'm not quite sure, but I love him for some reason. We talk about plans for the future. I'm hoping that with this bus, it'll give us more of a stability. Like a home will kind of give us like something more to work for with each other and something to be excited about. We have this really cool idea for getting like tiny little vials in the shape of diamonds, put a drop of blood in each other's and have that mounted on a ring. I think that is cool. Um, but I guess we'll see what happens. I just want to do more, man. Like, I don't want to just be sitting around. Like, even here, like, it sucks just sitting around. Like, <laughs> for example, today, like, they went out to go buy booze. Like, what's the fucking point of getting drunk at fucking noon? You know what I mean? Uh, Blackbird's gotta get out. I mean, I think Blackbird's gonna be Blackbird, dude. There ain't no stopping that. You know what I mean? That'd be like someone saying for me to not be the way that I am. You can't change really the way that people are. Blackbird will be dead before he's 25, man. I hate to say that because he's a really good friend of mine. But Blackbird will be dead before he's 25 for sure. And that's just a sad reality. But you know what I mean? Is what it is, dude. Everything comes to an end and you can't travel forever. Like, I don't know. I remember, like, probably the first year I was on the road, I'm like, this is what I'm going to do the rest of my life. There's nothing else I can do but this. But now that I realize, or now that I have realized that it's not, it's not something you want to do your whole life, you can only do it so long until it breaks you down and then you really have nothing, so. And, and that's another thing, like, you can look at, you can look at all the, the homeless people on the streets and it's like, what were they doing before they became homeless? Before all they knew was sleeping on the, the sidewalk in a fucking cardboard box. I feel like traveling broken hungry is the new virus. Like, the past few years, it's just like, pretty much exploded. Like, it used to be, you know, kind of underground. It used to be like, you know, if you were a traveler or a train hopper, that was like rare for you to come through, through town. People were excited, like, whoa, like, that's really fucking cool. Like, that's cool what you do, you know? Like, I respect that, that you go out and with nothing in your pockets, nothing in your stomach, and come back with something, you know? Most people don't realize that you don't really need to have anything in your pocket to be happy. I mean, you do, but money doesn't, money doesn't, I mean, it, you can buy happiness with money, but you know, that's gonna run out, you know? Happiness runs out. What makes you happy? Obviously, Pablo. Like, what are the things that make you happiest in life? I, I don't know, dude.
dude. <laughs> Hang on. Oh, motherfucker. Hang on. Dang. You're going to get me in the face, time, not the fucking dude. ear this time, time dude. Him Is it, did I win? Yeah, yeah, you just won, dude. I didn't even place any fucking bets. Wait, should I do this? Shut yeah, up dude. and slap me, dude. Where? In the face. Right in the face, in dude. The yeah, no fucking ear and behind the joke. <laughs> going 100% on my ass, dude. <laughs> Damn. Give it to me. I'm shuffling these bitches, dude. You gotta this be is for fucking this, kidding this me, This is for God. the slap and the walk for the oh, beer, dude. Can <laughs> that cigarette, please? I'm up in the ante, dude. <laughs> <laughs> dude. <laughs> Damn. Damn. <laughs> Take your card, What you got? Dude. It's a four. What this do guy's I have? a champion, yeah. dude. What's your name? You know my name, dude. I want you to hit me fucking hard. Hit dude. me like you hit me. Hit him like you hit me, dude. Am I gonna get it back? So, One, two, three. Back, dude. Ooh. <laughs> that was a smack, dude. That was like the palm, dude. I got that ringing in the ear. <laughs> got the food stamps on, man. North Dakota. North Dakota. Order, order. And uh, yeah, gonna get some fucking food to cook for tonight. I don't know, man. It's hard to choose, dude. Oh, I'm gonna get some dank cheese. Age 90 days. Slops is gonna become our friend for the night. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. Which one, dude? Which one, man? Oh, I'm trying to see which one I want. Yeah, dude, that one right there, man. Okay. Yeah, dude. He's like, fuck that, dude. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's gonna be good, dude. Get Loppy, get Loppy, get Loppy. Go get him. Oh. <laughs> All right, bring it back, bring it back. Come on, bring it back. <laughs> oh, <shit>. Pablo, <laughs> Pablo. <laughs> Drop him, drop it. <laughs> This could go on for hours, dude. Pablo! Come here, bring Loppy here. It's okay. Bring him here. <laughs> Pablo! Come here! Hey! Hey, come here! Come on! Come here! Give me him back! Mine! Let go! Now! This is mine! No! No! Come here. Sit down. Sit. Hey. Loppy's probably, oh, he's definitely dead now, dude. Huh? Still got a little life left in him. I'm not stupid. I just look stupid. I guess I want people to know that, you know, I'm not a fucking scumbag. I'm going to do stuff with my life. Um, I'll still travel, you know, still have a good time and, and fucking try to cheat the system as much as possible. <laughs> That's how I am. But I want to do it with uh, a little bit of, you know, productivity. September 5th of last year, there was about six of us. This kid named Scarecrow ended up getting blacked out drunk, standing up, robbing over on top of the fucking train. He started talking shit to me, and I'm like, you know, you fucking douchebag. And I woke up off the track 17 hours later. My lip was hanging down, dude. My whole face was messed up. My knee was here, you know. 
my dog stayed on the train, my backpack stayed on the train, he pretty much left me for dead, you know? Oh, I crawled three miles, you know? Like, literally had to pull myself, like, three fucking miles. Nobody picked me up hitchhiking. I don't blame you for not picking up a bloody dude hitchhiking. At least call 911, you know? I'm, like, halfway fucking dead here. I woke up in the helicopter, then, you know, give him medication, passed back, uh, back out, woke up in the hospital. I've always had perfect teeth, and one day I woke up without seven teeth, you know? I didn't see the guy for eight months, and I just recently ran into him. And I asked him why he did that, and his, his excuse was he was blacked out. Make a long story short, he ended up pulling, pulling out his seven teeth for me. First, he tried to beat, up, beat it out with a mag light. Then that didn't work, so he took pliers and, well, the man pulled out his teeth. I didn't think I was going to forgive him. Then, you know, he's a good kid. I'm kind of actually glad he pushed me off, you know? He put life back into me, you know? There's a lot of people that love the shit out of me, you know? And I think it'd just be selfish if I died. <laughs> if I died today, I could say I've had a great life. A beautiful life. The people I meet, the things I do, I want to change it for nothing.